My entitled brother takes a hammer and destroys my Xbox. But when I try to confront him and my parents about it, my parents yell at me and claim that my little brother would never do that. So I decided to get some revenge by exposing him for the liar that he is and eventually leading my parents to sending him off to boarding school. And I'm so happy I was able to get back at my little brother as well as getting him out of my life. Here's what happened. So for a bit of context, I'm 16 years old and in high school and my brother is 12 years old in middle school. Let's call him Bill. Bill is not his real name. He has always been super spoiled with anything he wants at any time. Like if he said, I want McDonald's, then someone had to go get him McDonald's right then and there. He was spoiled so much that he could not mentally comprehend not getting something or being told no. Well, eventually I got a job working at a fast food restaurant because my family needed the money, probably because they spoiled the crap out of my brother. But I secretly started to set aside money to buy an Xbox for myself. And eventually I did just that. Now, when my family found out I bought an Xbox, they just assumed I would let my brother play on it without permission on my account. But I flat out said no. And my brother began having a tantrum and my parents yelled at me for it, which is really stupid. It's my Xbox. They can get lost. Well, a few days later, my brother skipped out on school and destroyed my Xbox while my parents were gone. When I get home to my room, all I see is chunks of Xbox and pieces of the game discs everywhere. I immediately confronted my brother about this with my parents and my parents immediately took his side and eventually started to yell at me and my brother had the stupidest smug grin on his face and at that point I vowed to expose him for the jerk that he really was. So a few months later I saved up for two more Xboxes knowing well that I would need both. I hid one of the Xboxes in my closet and set one up in my room. I decided I was going to record him destroying the Xbox and then show it to my entire family and sure enough two Two days later, he skipped school and destroyed the console. He pretty much bit the hand that feeds him. But what he didn't know is that I caught him in 4K because I had my phone set up on a high shelf with a camera on to record him. I then confronted him and I was smiling like the Grinch. I go into his room and he says, something you want to say? Then I pulled out my phone and played the recording at full volume. And I edited the clip up to when he went into my room with a hammer and destroyed it. His eyes got huge and he began screaming like a toddler. My parents overheard and came upstairs and I showed them the recording and the look on their faces. Oh man, all they could do was just stand there in disbelief and watch it on repeat. I eventually walk out feeling like I had won the lottery and I pretty much had. I go into my room to clean up the mess and set up the second Xbox and as soon as I close the door, I hear my parents yelling at him at full blast for about 20 minutes and as they are doing this, I share the video on my family's Facebook page and I am almost instantly bombarded with nasty messages towards my parents for spoiling him so much and for just being awful parents. It felt so good to finally get my sweet revenge on this spoiled brat. He was eventually sent off to boarding school and my parents had to work more because it's not cheap. I also stopped helping to pay my family's bills because I just flat out said, I'm not going to pay for the stuff this stupid spoiled demon got. I only pay for the stuff that I need right now. My family also stopped giving my brother everything and I know for a fact that he will not be a good adult when he is 18 years old. It felt so good to finally get my brother caught as well as getting him out of my life. Wow, your brother's a demon for sure. Like seriously, what was he thinking? For starters, the precedent that your parents have set up for your brother in basically giving him whatever he wants is honestly so bad. You are literally telling this kid, yeah, it's okay to act like a brat. You're going to get whatever you want. And the parents are just enabling that left and right. It's not fair for the original poster or even for the kid that they're spoiling because the original poster has it right. He's probably going to going to grow up to be an awful adult, and that's not serving anybody or society in general. But also, how can the parents be so dense that they didn't realize that the brother destroyed the original Xbox? I mean, what, did the original poster break it himself just to blame his brother? That thing cost hundreds of dollars, and I'm sure the teenager of the house doesn't have that kind of money to just throw around whenever they want. That was really expensive, and they probably really liked the console to begin with. So it's really sad to see how deep within their own delusional thoughts, they had basically fallen into in thinking that their perfect son couldn't have destroyed that Xbox, which he absolutely did by the way. But honestly, with all things considered, your revenge was absolutely perfect. You caught him right in the act. You showed him exactly why you should not be messed with, and you got it all on recording to boot. And that in my opinion is the best way to go about doing this. Clearly words are not going to work for your parents, so you really do need some like concrete proof just to prove them wrong. So with all things considered, I don't think you're the jerk in this situation, and 
and I think that your little brother absolutely had this coming. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for telling my husband to not go on a family trip as we are in the middle of moving into our new home? Here's what happened. So for a bit of background, we were waiting for our home renovation permits for nearly two years, and this was all delayed due to the pandemic, and we finally started to work on the place this year. I got pregnant during that time and gave birth to my son half a year ago. I was going to return to work and have my parents look after him. However, my parents are overwhelmed, and they're elderly, so taking care of a toddler full-time just wasn't going to work. So I decided not to work and take care of our son myself. This November, our home will be completed with some delays, and we can finally move in. However, my mother-in-law wanted to go back home to China to see her grandparents and take a vacation with them to Hawaii in November. Since my mother-in-law is recovering from a minor surgery, my husband wanted to accompany her. I told him no because we're going to move in during that vacation time and we can't pay for two homes. We borrowed a mortgage for renovation and we are leasing a place right now. He insisted that he needs to go help his mom and this is the last vacation he can travel with his grandparents. Now, I would be a bit more lenient if that was the reason. However, his extended family is going on the trip too, which is like five plus people. So there would be plenty of help. I told him that he shouldn't go and that I needed him here. But he just brushed off my concerns, saying that my parents can help with a toddler while he is gone and I can manage the renovations and moving on my own. That turned into a heated argument and he ended the conversation by saying, you can't stop me. And since then, he has been stonewalling me and not helping me take care of the toddler. And now I honestly just don't know what to do. Now, my husband is the type of person to not speak up about any weakness or any needs that he has. I do admit that these last two years, it has been the toddler's needs over his. And I myself didn't have a lot of alone time while he had time for recreation and video games since I take on a majority of the mental load. I don't think it's out of jealousy. And I know why he wants to see his grandparents since he adores them. It is more along the lines to my belief that as a father, his wife and son should be priority. I do understand that he wants to see his grandparents. And if it was any other time, I would have said go on ahead, but I need him here. It is just really bad timing for the vacation and he just wanted to go. And when it comes to my parents, initially they were going to take care of our toddler until he turns three years old. But after taking care of him for a few days straight, they realized it was taking a toll on them. So I stepped in and took over. However, I really need to work to support the mortgage. But my husband doesn't want to pay for childcare since my parents are retired and he thinks they can just do it for free. I asked him multiple times if his family can help and each time he says no and our conversation just ends there. And honestly, when it comes to the vacation, I did not outright say no. I informed him that the vacation period was during the move in as well as the home completion date and that he should prioritize that first. He just stayed silent, which means that he understood. However, it was not until his family finalized the dates that he bought tickets for the trip. He knows how important having our own home with our son is. But clearly I'm not high on his hierarchy and at this point I seriously don't know what to do. Wow, your husband is being super toxic. Here you are with a newborn toddler as well as a new house that you're going to be moving into. And during this time when you really need the support, he's planning on going off to China to visit his family with a massive group of people. Like seriously, how can he not see that this is a problem? His wife and child need his help. It's not like you're being selfish by saying, hey we got stuff to do. This is literally reality staring you in the face. He's putting too much pressure on you and placing you in a really weird situation. And that's really unfair. That really does not set well with me personally. I know if I was in your shoes, I would be super upset. As someone who's moved around a lot growing up, I can tell you closing down on a house and moving to a new location really is not an easy process. There are a lot of moving parts and trying to do that by yourself is insane. Yes, it can get done, but with a toddler strapped to your hip, it's only going to be more complicated. And the fact that he would really look at you and say, you can't stop me. That is such a big red flag. It's not even funny. He would prioritize having some kind of vacation over you and your child. In fact, he won't even invest in childcare on his side of things. He won't ask his family and he won't pay for it for someone else to do it. He just says, oh, your parents can do it, even though they're literally not physically able to do it. Like, that's really not okay. That's really immature and unacceptable. And I really think you deserve a lot better than the way you're being treated. My entitled husband tries to trick me into changing my last name when 
we got married. And even though I discussed this with him for six years before we got married, he is still demanding that I take his last name despite the fact that I want to keep my maiden name. And I'm so unbelievably hurt and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So it's been one month since my wedding with Fred. Fred is not his real name. I'm a 28-year-old female and Fred is a 28-year-old male. And I am refusing to sign our marriage license and now I'm honestly considering leaving him. For six years, I believe Fred and I were on the same page about what we wanted from one another, as well as what we want out of our future. We agreed that we didn't want children ever, and I made it clear before and during wedding planning that I wasn't changing my last name ever, and he also agreed to this. I am an only child. While Fred has three brothers, my last name goes away with me, while his family's last name will continue on with his three brothers, who are all married with children, by the way, and with this all considered, and points made on these facts, I believe there wasn't an issue because Fred agreed to it. I personally hate the tradition of taking on the husband's last name. In my personal opinion, I think it's an archaic tradition that feels more like the transfer of property to a man as opposed to a union. And even though I'm never having children, even the thought of having someone else's last name being attached to my hypothetical child's name honestly just doesn't sit right with me. On top of that, why should I have to change all my registered IDs and documentation just because I'm a woman? It's honestly not fair. So it's our wedding day and Fred really pushed to have a ceremony in front of everyone where we would sign our marriage license together. He was first to go and when it was my turn, he had his hand placed really weirdly on the document. I told him to move his hand and we had an awkward, quiet battle about it and when he finally did, I saw exactly what he was hiding. It was his job to fill out all the forms for the license since he offered to do that for me so I had one less thing to worry about and he went behind my back and purposefully filled it out so I would be taking his last name. It turns out in Florida, you can put your maiden name and the name you're changing it to on the form and that's what I saw on the license. Both names. We were at the clerk together with all of our needed identifications and documentation and I was so stressed and exhausted. I wasn't paying attention and, you know, I trusted him. So I never thought once that in any world I would need to review what he filled out or to even review the license when he had it in hand. Now, I refused to make a scene in front of all of our friends and family or fall into the pressure that I was under. So I pretended to sign it and the rest of the night was absolutely ruined for me. Everything I thought we agreed to and all my preferences that he knew about and thought he respected were absolutely destroyed. It was like my world was ending in what should have been the best day of my life. Fred is now a completely different person. He's all about tradition now and how it's his right to have a wife with his last name, how it's embarrassing that his brother's wives didn't make this an issue for them and how all his friends will give him all this garbage if I don't change my name for him. He keeps saying that it's not that big of a deal and that I'm ruining our future. On top of that, he keeps bringing up the child argument, saying stuff like, we can't both have different last names and they should take mine. But I'm just thinking, I thought we didn't want any kids. I know it's technically the certificate that changes your last name, but to know that this is what he's wanted all along and that he was willing to try and pull one over on me is disgusting. I feel manipulated and heartbroken. And now he's put all the pressure on me to make a decision because time is running out on filing our marriage certification and he isn't changing his mind. I feel like I've wasted our guest time. I feel like I've wasted all of our family's money on our wedding as well as wasted our future together because I let him fool me for six years and I truly never saw this happening to me. I feel like I've wasted my life and I'm backed into a corner with someone I don't even recognize anymore. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. That is an awful situation. I'm so sorry you're dealing with that, but this really does not sound like a good start to your marriage. It's almost like he was listening to all the things that you wanted out of your marriage, and instead of being honest with you, it seems like he just played along and pretended to care about what you wanted. That is so gross in my opinion, and you said it best yourself. He knew exactly what you wanted. He knew that you wanted to keep your last name, and yet here you are on your wedding day in front of everybody, almost signing a license that would basically change your last name. He also knows that you don't want any children, but here he is suddenly after six years of knowing how you feel, talking about the future children that the two of you are going to have. Like seriously, I would feel like I'm losing my mind as well. So I don't blame you for feeling this way. And in my opinion, this is a big red flag because I really think that you're seeing exactly how Fred actually is. He is starting to open up in a way that you've never seen before. I would even be willing to bet that this probably feels like a complete stranger. I know if I was in this situation, I would feel that way. Here I am marrying someone 
somebody and literally they change overnight. They're saying stuff like, oh, my brother's wives didn't make a big deal out of this. Why can't you just change your last name? Like Fred is either dense or just completely ignorant. So honestly, I don't blame you for feeling the way that you do. And I don't blame you for getting upset because if he really loved you, he would not be acting in this way. And it's just really sketchy all around. And hopefully things get better before it gets worse. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk subreddit. Check the links in the description if you would like to submit your own story. Am I the jerk for leaving my job at my scheduled time and leaving a task unfinished, even though I've been told multiple times that we need to comply to our scheduled labor hours? Here's what happened. So I work as a pizza delivery driver for a popular pizza chain. About a month or so ago, our district manager decided to cut back labor hours to all the stores that she takes care of in her district. This isn't a problem for the other stores, as they don't have as many employees as our store does. It was a complete detriment to us, though, as we are now required to leave as soon as we can, whether that be our scheduled clock out time or sooner. When our store manager told us about this, we'll call him Jim. Jim is not his real name. One of my co-workers asked what to do if we have to leave, but we have a task that is unfinished. Jim said you still have to finish that task before you leave. Essentially, we are supposed to leave on time with all tasks completed, but most days that is entirely impossible. With being a delivery driver for this company, depending on your shift, you have to do dishes or prep dough for the next day, as well as answer phones and talking out deliveries. And there are some nights where there are large amounts of deliveries that will take up most of, if not all of your shift, and you will barely be able to do anything else. Fast forward to last night, and I was working a closing shift, which meant that I was doing the dishes. It had been a nice balance of doing that and taking out deliveries, and I did not have much time left. About 30 minutes before we closed, I had to take a delivery to a home in a very small town about 10 minutes away. This meant that I would be gone for at least 20 minutes for the round trip. That's not including the time to get out of my car with the order, waiting for the customer to answer, giving them their order, and then leaving. That varies wildly from customer to customer, but thankfully, that only took a couple of minutes. I didn't get back to the store until 10 minutes before we closed. I was scheduled off 15 minutes after we closed, and I got as much done as I could in the time I had left. When it hit the time for me to leave, I put away what I had done and I clocked out. About 10 minutes minutes later, I received a text from a phone number I didn't know. It was the manager that was on duty for that night. Let's call her Heather. Heather is not her real name. Heather, I guess, wasn't happy that I left and sent me a text message basically saying, next time you decide to leave, maybe you should finish your job. Attached to the text message was an image of some dishes from up front that I didn't even know were there. And it wasn't even that much. There was maybe like, what, one to two loads, maybe three of dishes that I had missed? Fast forward and it's the next day and I haven't responded to the text message at all. I'm going to be getting a hold of Jim today and ask for better clarification on what's the deal with our labor hour cutbacks, as well as asking for our district manager's contact information. I did what I was supposed to do, which was clock out on time, but I get an angry text message for not completing my task before I left, which by the way would have put me into overtime. I'm annoyed and I'm incredibly confused now. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? Honestly, I do not think you're the jerk here. Let's look over the logistics real quick. First off, it's not that many dishes. This Heather lady's acting like you just didn't do any dishes at all. Look, you did the best you could with the time you had left. And if these people want you to clock out on time, then guess what? That's what I'm going to do. In my opinion, I think it's incredibly unethical to try and force your employees to work off the clock just to try and complete some kind of task that they could have done on the clock. It's wrong to try and do that and incredibly illegal. If I'm clocking into work, I deserve to get paid for every every second that I'm there. So for Heather to be like, wow, you didn't even complete your job, considering all the things that you need to do, that in my opinion is so disgusting. And also, if you really want a business to fail, just start cutting people's hours. That'll definitely take care of it. The fact that there's no give or take when it comes to this job is, in my opinion, completely insane. I don't know about you, but working at a pizza restaurant is probably the last place I would want to work. Not because I wouldn't enjoy it, which I honestly don't think I'm cut out for that type of work, but in my opinion, think about how busy busy a pizza restaurant is, especially if they send drivers out for delivery. Like, that would be a constant grind to get people's orders done and completed. And you know for a fact that people are going to call in late, people are going to give the wrong address, people are not going to show up to get their pizza, and all this other stuff. I would imagine that's a job that has a lot of nuance when it comes to what's expected of you on the job. So for the district manager to be like, okay, do all of your jobs, but in this set amount of time, that in my opinion is awful. And that is not a good sign of that work environment. So overall, no, I I don't think you're the jerk. You 
you didn't do anything wrong and you were literally just trying to get your situation figured out. And hopefully in the future, they're able to give you some kind of leeway when it comes to staying over time and doing your job. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.